Good morning, afternoon, and evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Zachary Nolan. And my name is Carter Nolan. And we are back with episode three of the Book of Boba Fett season one. Have to say season one, because I have no doubt that there will be more seasons after this, the well, way the show is going. Well, 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 with the way it's going, and I, I'm not sure, I'm like, I don't know. I, I, they're like, because it, it sounded when they first announced it like it was just going to kind of be a one season right. thing, and then they're going to go back to do Mandalorian. But with how good it is, I really want more. So let's just get this caught up. Um, also, if you're new to the channel, we would appreciate it if you could subscribe because that'd be really nice. We're trying to get 700. That would be very yes, much appreciated. Um, and we do have live reactions, in case you're wondering, Ooh, of yeah. things that happen. We have three in this episode, I believe, right? Yes, three. Okay. And and yeah, like, and we always record ourselves watching the episodes, and then we do these semi-review reaction, all yeah. that jazz. So, spoiler free, I'll just cover that quick. Um, this one is a lot more brief in the past, as unlike the Not last much two backtracking. that did a lot more of the time. But it was between. necessary. It, it, was it, it was well, but it but it was mostly in the present day, which was actually a very good tone change because from the past storyline, we know where it gets to. The present storyline, we don't know where it goes. So it's always smart that they actually would more focus on the present storyline in this episode. Yeah. So with all that being said, it, this is a pretty good episode. If this you're is a fan the best the, one, the, yeah. The, if you're a fan of the past segment, you might be a little disappointed, but that should subside with what they're doing in the present. So with that said, there's your spoiler-free warning. Your spoiler warning. So let's get into this episode. Yes. So um, first off, like, Mayor, like, like, what, do you want to just get the past storyline out of the way? Like, like, what, about how they got slaughtered? Yeah, well, guys? first off, like, it's interesting. He tries to... He tries with the hikes for about, protection for the Tuscans, which is good. Uh, however, the speeder bike gang was the deal that they had set up with the Pikes already. The Pikes make a fair deal in saying they only want to deal with one, and then the speeder bikes just slaughter the Tuscans while he's away. Yeah, which is rough because I, I had thought because in hindsight it makes sense because when we find Boba in Mandalorian season two, he is alone. But at the same time, it was like, I would have assumed that they were building up to a culmination between uh, the two Well, yeah, and it, se and it almost seemed like it was one of those things where he had, he had really kind of transformed himself and he had, he had learned, he had, grew, he had grew, and it was almost kind of, I almost view, I always thought what they were going to do is kind of have him just, you know, it's like the bird finally leaving the nest, you know what I mean? Yeah. Sort of thing. So. Like they were going to do something like that, but nope. Dead Tuscans! That's what you get. Anakin Skywalker so, style. There is a good sign though now. We know that at the end that this ep that the third episode's past scenes mm -hmm. take place at the end or after the end of Return of the Jedi, which is not a given, which was not a given. But we now know it because of the sand like the stormtroopers head on pikes. Yeah. On Spike. So now we know that like the other two episodes. Oh, so what, so what I'm saying is is the timeline of the two episodes before it actually probably might match up a lot better, a lot closer to Return of the Jedi than we think. But this third one is finally actually going well, past this, this, Return this, of the this Jedi. Thir this third one is finally showing you how, like, it gives you a time period of how long he was actually with the Tuscans. Right. Which is, like, you know, a few months at least. Right. At least. Yeah. Like, because think about it. You have to get from the, you have to get from the point of Death Star 2 getting blown up in Return of the Jedi, which wouldn't have been long after he got out of the Sarlacc pet. Um, and then you have to get to the point where the Empire... Well, no, the you Empire can put spikes up like fucking anything. Yeah, but the em it was really when the Empire took more of a... more of a hit. It didn't happen I right guess, away. but yeah. Anyway. At least I think it probably wouldn't have. Anywho. Yes. Um... Yeah, but that's honestly like so he's probably just gonna go on a murderous rampage against the speeder bike gang because there's but there is now no one left to really be in the sand dunes, so it's an interesting thing. But anyway, let's get to the present storyline. So Or well, it's probably other groups of Tuscans. Uh, okay. So first off, yeah, of course. Um the present storyline is good. Like it's it's well, solid. Well it's, actually before we get to the present storyline, the way yes. we get to the so present, the present story storyline. Line. So first off, we get a little bit of the present storyline at first though, where he recruits people. That was a nice touch. Yep. And honestly, 
everyone in this group is becoming some have somewhat of an identity, which is a very good task that they're and and, it, very and it's well. good that they actually made them really unique by making them kind of like cyborg, and each of them has like their own like ability sort of thing. Yeah, as it makes it really good to it makes it really easy to differentiate themselves. Right, uh, which is why I feel like going forward we may actually be able to you know know each character individually rather than just the gang. You know right. I mean? so. Well, there's four of them, so it's a good yep. it's a good round number. Um, also, too, like, the fact that, like, man's paying for water, that's, that's a, that's a, that's a that's dangerous Tatooine, game. Though. That's tight, that's Tatooine, that's a rough one. I knew that guy was a fucking, gonna be a fucking asshole the second he came in, though. His attitude, it was just bad vibes. It was just bad vibes. But anyway, nonetheless, um, we get to pretty much the, the most, the terrifying scene. Um, Boba Fett gets awoken to, how do we say his name? Uh, Kersantan. Kersantan, the Wookiee <laughs> bounty hunter, <laughs> nearly murdering Boba Fett. Holy shit. Reaction to that here. Holy shit, he's waking up. Oh! Oh boy. What? Oh. Um, that was terrifying. That was Holy absolutely crap. horrifying. Um, I was waiting for him to pop his arms off. It's <laughs> one of those things, also, too, while this fight progressed, me and Carter are very parental about the, the, um, uh, the Gamorrean guards. We love yeah. those fuckers. Yes. We love those green no, fuckers. No, don't get rid like, of them. When no. he picked them up and started biting him, I'm like, no! I'm like, no! Boys! Don't you dare! Don't but you anyway, abs Don't you dare! Because honestly... Not them! The Gamorrean More guards soldiers. always make it... Are always a good fixture of this show because it just rounds out the setting really well. You can't have Jabba's and it, and it almost and it, and, it's, and, it, and it really connects this show to Return of the Jedi. Yes, those are just, those are just a staple of Jabba's palace. Although, there will be more that will connect this to Return of the Jedi. <laughs> Nonetheless. <laughs> so, let's get into... That fight scene is great. The fact that they trap him in the Rancor pit is great. Um, the Rancor pit is no longer a Rancorless pit because we got a goddamn motherfucking Rancor now! Rejection, yeah! Holy shit! What? It's... Oh, hey, that guy. I, I love how- I love how the huts come in and we're like, we are sorry we tried to kill you. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> what a hut- like, huts are fucking oblivious. Like Bloody they come scum. in, they come in there, and they're like, "We we are sorry, we tried to kill you. We apologize." Those are legit, like word for word. You three must lines accept it. How can you row not? What they say, and it's like, okay. So also too. So. The name, Chrysanthemum. Chrysanthemum gets free. So for so pretty much. The huts decide. Huts know that there's a deal going on with someone else, and the huts don't want war. So the huts go back to Nalhutta, which is a surprising move. But honestly, this no. is what I think. This is what I think. They're just waiting on the power vacuum again. Well, you they're know, they're just you, waiting. You, it out. You, you know, they don't they're, need a war. They're they're, they're gonna back out. They're gonna wait for the two to beat each yeah, other. Yeah, that's up. what I said. That yeah. They're gonna they're gonna wait for the huts. They, they don't, don't want to face two territory. Enemies. If yeah. you've seen a timeline of the galaxy, the huts don't lose territory. They don't. Huts base. They, they just don't. sit there. They just fucking sit there. From and like, like and, and this goes back to old republic. Like, they'll be like, here, like, here we are, thousands of we years. Building. Hot and space now we don't change. If anything, they add little piece by piece here and there. Every like three hundred years, they'll add. A but they'll add a piece, but then they'll really lock it down before they go anywhere else. Yeah. And everywhere they have is under lock and key. So, but then the huts storyline seems to be on hold right now, which is good <coughs> because we don't want too many cooks in the. Because kitchen. we got a lot of the stuff with the pikes now. Yeah. But before we get to that, we get to meet this rancor. So this rancor, so is a gift to them as a peace offering, which is a very good peace offering. And the Rancor, um, 
and its trainer are a welcome addition, by the way, to the cast. Um, also, too, um, I now I I have legitimate questions on how they got the Rancor in there. Okay, because we never really see a pathway that's big enough for the like. I, you know, I'm right. It, it's funny though. I gotta say, it was funny when I saw it, and I was just kind of like. That's like the dad from Spy Kids or the uncle, uncle, the uncle, uncle, the uncle, 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 uncle Machete. Spy Kids. I haven't seen that movie in so long. Uncle Machete. <laughs> yeah. Anywho, but no, like they're both welcome cast, and also now I mentioned this in the reaction. Actually, we'll do the reaction here. Forest and bends. No, you can ride them on Felicia. I want to learn to ride this one. What? I want to ride it. Ten times size. Teach me. That is the reaction of us finding out he's going to ride them. And if you notice <laughs> what I did there, was I actually mentioned Felucia. That's a very big point, because in now Carter's gonna love this. Carter in Star Wars Legends, um, the Force Unleashed, um, Rancors are used actually quite frequently on Felucia, and they're actually ridden by Shock T. And a bull rancor, which is like a rancor on steroids with oh, bigger yeah. horns, that, that, was yeah. um, used by Maris Brood. So we've actually seen in the past them be ridden. However, it was more as a formality than like a war weapon type thing. They just kind of rode them away. I'm very and then happy one got, you used the L word. Yeah, I know. I know you are. <laughs> but yeah, so honestly, I'm very excited for that. Um, there's a great uh, chase scene, which really shows off the cybernetic, uh, uh, cybernetic group. The capabilities um, that they got. Where they with chase the, down the mirrors. With the one advisor. guy who has a jackhammer in his foot, uh, and yeah. the other guy who. <laughs> Much fun. <laughs> That's basically what Flame it is. Flamethrower on his <laughs> hand. <laughs> Honestly, like, and then it just culminates in them finding out that the Pikes are the groups coming in, and then the Pikes show up. And honestly, that's that's a good. Place it's funny to that one it. guy who was the scout though. He really gave me that. Like, other than the fact that he was a cyborg, he gave me the, a vibe of cyborg from the Justice League, with like the one eye. No, the, the one eye. eye. I yeah. see that. I see that. Yeah. And also just the way he talked and whatnot. But anyway, you know, um, no, it was a really good episode. Vibe. It was a really good episode. Yes, um, best it's one yet. Building. It's building pieces that are very good because exactly. honestly. We are going to get to see Boba Fett ride a fucking ride. He's got a jetpack. He don't need to do it. But, like, he he's wants gonna, to. But, but he that, wants to do it. But he's going to ride a Rancor. To do it. Anyway, so. Fuck the jetpack. He's riding a Rancor. So, once again, thank you so much for tuning in. Don't forget to leave a like on your way out. Um, subscribe. And uh, comment down below your thoughts and on And subscribe episode. to CFL Central. Plug, 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 plug. plug, plug, plug. Anyway, uh, <laughs> thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.